Good evening, everyone. Welcome to 49ers Quality Control. I am the most decorated quality control coach of all time, Grant Cohn, covering the 49ers for Sports Illustrated. Uh, sorry I didn't do a cone phone this weekend. My bad. I'll do one this week. But first, I want to talk about my I want to I want to talk about my thoughts on free agency, uh, what the Niners have done so far. But I want to start off with uh what's next. Let's spin it forward. Not, most Niner fans aren't really happy with what's happened so far. In free agency, I'll talk about it and I'll talk about the good things they've done, but let's talk about what's next because that's what you want to know about. Uh, oh, you like my chair? I got a chair. Feels good. I like it. Although there's not enough room to lean back. It kind of gets caught right there. So I don't know. I'm probably gonna have to get a house next so I can actually get a studio. But okay, let's talk about where Jimmy Garoppolo will end up. I think it's pretty clear. How many teams need quarterbacks at this point? Four? I think there's four. So let's go through each one. The New Orleans Saints, they lost out on Deshaun Watson. They could be in the Jimmy Garoppolo sweepstakes, but they're not. They're reportedly talking to Jameis Winston, which would be the smarter signing for them. He's been there. They're invested in him. They didn't have to trade for him. Better to sign him than trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. So forget the Saints. Then you got Seattle, the Seattle Seahawks. They lost Russell Wilson. Their current starting quarterback is Drew Locke still. You have a life-size picture of the Seahawks wanting Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, imagine that phone call. If the Niners called the Seahawks, they would just start laughing. Pete Carroll, he knows Jimmy Garoppolo for what he is. He knows his limitations. They would just laugh. So forget Seattle. I don't know if the Niners would want to send him in, in, inside their own division. I don't know if they'd care, but I don't think Seattle would even consider it. All right? Then you got the Carolina Panthers, who are dumb, but... If they were to trade for Jimmy Garoppolo, they'd be spending more than $45 million at quarterback between him and Sam, Sam Darnold. And like, you know, while the Panthers may be dumb, no one's that dumb. No one's that dumb to spend $45 million on two of the lowest football IQ quarterbacks in the league. The only quarterback who may have a lower football IQ than Jimmy Garoppolo is Sam Darnold. So maybe the, the, the Panthers like quarterbacks who have no freaking clue what they're looking at. Um, Cause they're already majorly invested in one, but I, two's overkill. So I, I don't see it as that to me. There's one destination for, for Jimmy Garoppolo. It's Indianapolis. It seems pretty clear that Indianapolis likes Jimmy Garoppolo. Like they see him as a better fit in their locker room than Carson Wentz. Fine. But it's also pretty clear that they're not going to trade their second round pick number 42 for Jimmy Garoppolo. And it's obvious that that's what the Niners are holding out for. There was a report that they had a sec an offer of a second round pick a couple of weeks ago. They're holding out for that. Uh, I don't know if it was ever real. Um, but Indianapolis has all the leverage. Lynch is trying to wait for leverage. Like, as if there's going to be some point in time when Indianapolis has no point choice but Jimmy Garoppolo. But he's been playing that game for weeks, and there's always another option. So with, with, with Lynch, what's going to happen is if the Niners insist on their second round pick from Indianapolis, they, they'll just trade for Baker Mayfield. If the option is – if they have to trade a second-round pick, Indianapolis, they're going to trade for Baker, not Jimmy. Or they'll just sign a quarterback like Marcus Mariota because it's smarter to sign Mariota than trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. There's always going to be another option available for the Colts. So what the Niners have to do now is accept less than the second-round pick. Just take a third. I'm guessing that if the Niners called up the Colts today and said, we'll take your third-round pick, the Colts would say, fine, let's do this. But the Niners are being stubborn here. And I, particularly John Lynch. John Lynch is being really, really, really stubborn. I think it's because he wanted Jimmy Garoppolo. And he sees Jimmy Garoppolo the way the players do in the locker room. He sees him as the savior. Someone whose intangibles outweigh his limitations. His, you know, his it outweigh his physical limitations. And I think he's really upset, like, upsets, mad, emotional, that the rest of the league doesn't see Jimmy Garoppolo the way he does. Like, what's the phrase that kids say? In his feelings? John Lynch is in his feelings that he's the only one who thinks Jimmy Garoppolo is worth anything. So um, someone else has to step in at this point. Lynch is just being emotional. He needs to fall on his sword now. He needs to look, go to Jed York and say, you know, I, I promised X, Y, Z for Jimmy Garoppolo. I promised two second round picks. I can't get it. I'm the bad guy. We're going to take this third round pick at the cap space. Move on. Because I feel like fans are pissed right now. Fans are like, well, why aren't we spending more, more money? 
we're a few plays away from a Super Bowl. We're really not going to make a final push to go over the top. Who's to say players aren't like that? I mean, players want to win a Super Bowl, right? At, at what point are the is this locker room going to be like, yo, why is Jimmy still here? I thought you told us he's gone. When are we going to spend this cap space? When, when are we going to make this final push to be the best team in the league? Like, it seems like the Niners are real content to be one of the best teams in the league and not make that final push to be the best team. Just trade him for the third round pick now. Trade him to Indianapolis for a third round pick today. Stop waiting for that 40 second pick. You're not going to get it. So where will Jimmy Garoppolo end up? He could end up in Indianapolis today, tonight, if if John Lynch would just fall on his sword and admit he was wrong and accept whatever he can get. I think it's a third round pick. That'd be great for Jimmy Garoppolo. But instead, what John's going to do is draw this out, draw this out, draw this out, and trade him when? During the draft? Right before training camp? For what? A third round pick? So you're, you're not going to get the second round pick. All you're doing is delaying the ability to use the cap space. And there's always going to be some fans that are like, who cares about cap? Well, everything the Niners do is right and good. A lot of smart fans are going to say, yo, what the hell? And, and players too. Why didn't we use this cap space early? You created the cap space in July? Wonderful. whoop de freaking do That doesn't help us this year. So where will Jimmy Garoppolo end up? Indy. He should be there already. If, the, if John Lynch would just admit that he's not worth the 40-second pick, I think he'd be there already. This is on John. Is that new chair ergonomic? You have no, it's so good. But again, I don't have enough room to actually lean back, which is, I guess, on me. You know, I guess I got to get a house now. I, You should see my bedroom. It's a joke. You think Debo's contract going to be more than Adam's? Mm, no, but it's going to be very expensive. All right, let's talk more about this Garoppolo thing. Let's talk about Kyle Shanahan's role in the Jimmy Garoppolo trade. I think John Lynch is the one who's... um unable to act right now, emotional, not acting as a good businessman. He's emotional that he's wrong about his opinion of Jimmy. He's always thought Jimmy Garoppolo is a franchise quarterback. He thinks he's worth two second round picks. He's freaking wrong. No one else in the league uh, sees sees Garoppolo that way, including Kyle Shanahan, in my opinion. I think Kyle Shanahan always saw Jimmy Garoppolo for the limited quarterback that he is. You know, quick release, used to have a good arm, no mobility, can't read defenses. Uh, this is a total product of a surrounding cast and play caller. Kyle knows that. That's why Kyle pushed to trade up for Trey Lance last year. Kyle's been trying to replace Jimmy Garoppolo for a long time, but he hasn't taken charge. You think like Kyle runs his organization. He could, but it doesn't seem he does because after he made the big push for Trey Lance, what did he do? He let John Lynch keep Jimmy Garoppolo longer than he should still on the team. Let John Lynch keep John, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo because John Lynch has his own agenda. And then he let he let the freaking um, locker room choose which quarterback was going to start. Kyle wanted to play Trey Lance. He was getting Trey Lance packages. He was inserting him in the first drive of the season. He wanted Lance on the field. The locker room wanted uh, Garoppolo because there was a choice, because Lynch created the choice. And so Kyle Shanahan just capitulated. That's not leadership. Kyle needs to be a leader now. I think he can be a leader, but he was a follower last year. He followed his players' wishes. Oh, you want Jimmy? All right, we can go, Jimmy. I don't play a anymore. Fine. Whatever you guys want. I don't want to, I want to be the cool, the cool coach. Call me Kyle. I'm the cool, whatever you guys say, man, we're a family. We're all tight knit. I'm not going to lose the locker room. Be a leader. How about that? John Lynch isn't going to make the right decision. He's being emotional and he's uh, incredulous that he can't get the second round. He's going to hold on forever until he gets that second round pick. Step in, Kyle. It's your team. Step in and tell John, this has gone on long enough. Let's cut him or let's trade him for whatever Indianapolis is offering. A third, let's take it. John, I'm overruling you. Jed, this is what we're going to do. Make an executive decision. John's not going to do it. Jed's not going to do it. 30 years ago, Eddie Bartolo would have done it. Kyle, it's got to be you. You were a straight up follower last year. You made this big push for Trey Lance. Everyone liked it. And then you didn't have the nerve to play him because some of your players on your team didn't want. You're the leader, Kyle. Drive this bus. Get Jimmy Garoppolo to Indianapolis. Get that third round pick and move on with Trey Lance. Make a big decision. And you know what? I think a lot of the players that wanted you to keep Jimmy Garoppolo are going to start looking at you weird. If you keep Jimmy Garoppolo just to, just to keep him on the bench. Oh, he's the backup now? They're not going to spend that $27 million on other positions? Are we really in it to win a Super Bowl or just contend? Because look like it's looking like they're just in it to contend. Like they're happy being the sixth best team in the league. Getting the playoffs and seeing what happens. 
this trade's never going to happen unless Kyle steps in and does something. Kyle, we know you want to do it. We know you want to trade Lance. We know John Lynch wanted to keep Jimmy Garoppolo and probably like Mac Jones better. Step up. Step up and get John Lynch out of the way, man. You hired him. Take control. Put yourself out there. You afraid of taking a risk? Afraid of being wrong? You got to be a leader here, man. It's on you. Otherwise, no one else is going to act. Sorry. Just trying to be direct here. Let's move on. Why the Niners aren't going all in. So the Niners aren't going all in, in my until they trade Jimmy Garoppolo and spend that cap space on new players. But that's not going to happen. Because one, they can't, Jimmy's still on the team. But even if Jimmy weren't on the team, I don't think they'd go all in on this year. If Jimmy, if they trade Jimmy two weeks ago and they had an extra 25 million in cap space, I don't think they'd be using it. And maybe that's part of the reason that they've been so reluctant to trade him, that they've been so um, content to wait and be really cons- slow. Because I don't think they ever intended to make a big splash in free agency this year. They made they, they got one starter, Traverius Ward, and he wasn't cheap. Going to cost them almost $14 million a year. Other than that, I think their intention is to sign a bunch of backups. Sign Traverius Ward. Show people, you know, placate your fan base. Give the media something to praise you about and then just go straight up backups, depth, special teams. Why? Over the weekend, I was hypothesizing that it's a lack of faith in Trey Lance that like, hey, we don't really know what we have in him and maybe we'll go all in next year. Now, forget all that. The Niners don't make decisions like that. At the highest levels, it's not football based. It's always money based. Why are the Niners waiting until next year to go all in? Because the cap goes up in 2023. End of story. Going to go up big time in 2023. They're waiting until that. Also, this year. So what they're going to do this year is eventually trade Jimmy. No rush. Because all they're going to do with that is re-sign Nick Bosa and Debo Samuel. So they could trade Jimmy. What, what, what did um Adam Schefter say? They, they could draw this into training camp? Because the extensions for Nick Debo Samuel and Nick Bosa aren't going to come until right before training camp. So that's when the trade's going to happen. And they're just going to use that money on Debo and Nick Bosa. They're only going to bring in one new starter this year when they need lots of new starters. And they're going to say, hey, we're still one of the best teams in the league. We're still going to be in the playoffs. We're still going to contend. And they probably will. But when they fall a little bit short, that'll be two years in a row that they could have won the Super Bowl but didn't because they had a ton of money being wasted on the, on the Jimmy Garoppolo thing. So and it's, I think it's way smarter to go all in this year because if you wait until next year, every team's going to have cap space. Like, you know what I mean? Every team's going to have cap space. Cap's going to go up. Every team's going to have cap space. So how are you going to have an advantage? You're in Silicon Valley. You're in Santa Clara. No one who's not from here wants to live in Santa Clara and pay those prices. You're not a free agent destination yet. You're just not. So if you went all in this year, you'd be one of the few teams with cap space. You would have an advantage. You could go out and splurge and get Stephon Gilmore right now. Zadarius Smith right now. And have very little competition. Next year when you create this cap space, you're going to have a ton of competition. You're going to do business as usual. Which is just, you know, not splurge on the best players. Get tier two players. That's what they're going to do. That's why the Niners aren't going all in. It's a financial decision. The organization is run by financial analysts. Jed York, Parag Parag Marate. They're not making football decisions. It's not like, oh man, we're three plays away. Let's pivot. Let's Let's do, let's improvise. Let's go, let's not do business as usual. Let's do something a little out of character to go over the top because nothing's promised or guaranteed in this, in this, uh, in football. You think you have a team that's going to be in contention to contend for the next five years. And then people retire, people get hurt. Things change. Ask Jim Harbaugh. So always wait until next year is dangerous. Go all in now. There's still a bunch of good free agents available. If you sign, if you traded Jimmy Garoppolo to the Colts for a third round pick today, you could go get Zadarius Smith tonight. Instead, they'll wait until next year. They'll call it a win that they re-signed. Uh, what they're gonna they're gonna spin it like this: We improved our two biggest weaknesses, cornerback and special teams. We got a third round pick or whatever for Jimmy Garoppolo eventually, and we re-signed Debo and Bosa. Boom! That's a win. No, that's not enough. You could have done so much more. And a lot of people are going to praise you for it. 
because you have a lot of sycophants in your fan base and in, and in, and in the media, although that's bled together. I'm not going to praise you for that. You shouldn't be praised for that. A team that's content being sixth best in the league is pretty whack to me. Go for it. Go for it. Jed, go for it. Your uncle would. You always talk about calling your uncle. What would your uncle do? Your uncle would go for it right now. He wouldn't wait till next year. Why are you waiting till next year? Because a spreadsheet told you that's the best thing to do? Because Parag told you it was the best thing to do? I'm telling you, you go, in, go all in now. If you wait until next year, that's a that's just a weak financial analyst move. Make a football decision. How about that? Jed? So Ref knows what I'm talking about. Thanks for coming a new member. All right, let's move on. The truth about Traverius Ward. Uh, the Niners signed him to do what he did last year. He was very good last year. Now, let's just talk about what he is. He's like, like the exact opposite of Richard Sherman. When Richard Sherman was on this team, I couldn't stand the way he played. He played zone coverage. He played like 10 yards off. And he was just trying to like jump one pass a game and pick off that one pass. And you know what? He was pretty good at it. But in the process, he would give up so much separation. First down after first down after first. All you had to do was run a comeback on him first down. He was just, as long as I don't get beat deep and I intercept a few passes a, a season, I'm staying in the league. I'll be all pro. And that was his thing. And it it was very extreme. He was good at it. Ward is the other extreme. He's not hanging back nine yards off the ball. He's not playing zone coverage. He is in the wide receiver's face, press man coverage. And then when it's time to run downfield, Ward's going to turn his back to the to the quarterback and chase the wide receiver. That, I love coverage like that. Because what you're doing is not baiting the throw. You're denying the throw. You can't throw here. He's not covered. I mean, he's not open. He's covered. I love that. That's the best kind of coverage, in my opinion. And when you have your back to the quarterback, really hard to catch the ball. You're really, I mean, some guys can get their head around quickly, but really you're taught to like just break up the ball. And last year he did that at an elite level, playing press man coverage. He gave up a 79.4 quarterback rating and committed only four penalties while being all up in, a, in wide receivers faces, being very, very physical. That's great. That's why the Niners signed him. That's why everyone is praising the signing, right? He was really good last year. Thing about him, he was not really good in 2020. Also, in 2021, he missed four games. That's like a quarter of the season. So he had a very good 13-game stretch in 2021. But in 2020, he was not good. Uh, he played 14 games. He gave up a quarterback rating of 103 and committed 11 penalties. 11 penalties in 14 games. Who does that remind you of? 11 penalties, 14 games, 103 passer rating. That's terrible. Who is that? That's Josh Norman. Josh Norman in 2021 on this team with that pass rush and that front seven, gave up a quarterback rating of 110, 11 penalties in 15 games. That's Josh Norman. So my question is, which Traverius Ward did the Niners get? The guy who balled out in his contract year or the guy who really struggled in 2020? Because the way he played in 2020, 103 quarterback rating, giving up 11 penalties, you'd be better off playing Ambry Thomas. Like that's that's not an upgrade from Ambry Thomas, the 2020 version of Traverius Ward. 2021 version of Traverius Ward, hell of a player. But which one are you getting? I mean, how many times have the Niners gotten burned by, burned by players in their contract years? D Ford? I'm just saying. So I'm curious on that. And I, I can't help but notice that this, the Chiefs weren't eager to bring him back. They saw 2020. That must have been painful for them. They let him go and sign Justin Reed instead. And you know what? The Niners needed a strong safety. Maybe they should have signed Justin Reed. What do the Chiefs know about J Traverius Ward the Niners? Don't, why do the Niners think they know more about Ward than the Chiefs? I don't know. Anyway, my question with Ward. So the plan for him is to, is to let him actually press, right? Do press coverage. Well, the Niners tried that last year, if you remember. They let Mosley, um, Norman, all their corners get right up in the face of, of wide receivers. And what happened? Uh, pass interference, holding, pass interference, deep uh, catch. Like It was bombs away on the Niners uh, secondary for the first six, seven games of the season. Then D'Amico Ryans made an adjustment. Everyone played nine yards off. Do not get beaten deep. Do not... Uh, Mug the wide receiver down the field. Play off. Don't have a lot of contact. Don't get beat deep. And that worked for the Niners. All of a sudden, penalties were gone. Big plays were gone. But you know what was 
what the uh, what the what they compromised their third down defense because all of a sudden they couldn't stop comebacks on the outside third and 15 first down because they're not they're trying to not get beat deep third and 15 deep comeback first down over and over and over and the Niners defense ranked 20th on third down when they had a phenomenal shouldn't happen phenomenal pass rush 20th on, on uh third down shouldn't happen so how many penalties is it going to take before D'Amico and Kyle are like you know what Traverius just line up nine yards off and play off because once they do that with Traverius Ward he's not worth it he they're going to give him 16 million dollars in 2023 he's going to be now I know the cap's going up but they made a huge commitment to him because they think he can do straight up man-to-man jam press man coverage Okay, well, he couldn't in 2020. Not without committing 11 penalties. He did it so well in 2021. Which one are you going to get? If you have to put him off nine yards and say, look, man, you got to stop committing penalties, then you just got uh, you just got freaking Josh Norman again. So I'm, I have no idea which Traverius Ward the Niners got, but I don't think they do either. I think they f- hope they got the one from last year, but how many times have you seen a dude Who's just a dude become a star in a, in a in a contract year? Is that him? Seems like the Chiefs thought so, and it seems like they have a pretty good feel of when to get rid of their players. I mean, they knew when to get rid of D Ford. Second place don't mean ish in the NFL. Seems like Lynch is okay with that as long as he keeps his job. Same with Jed York, man. It seems like they're really okay with being in the hunt. Like Eddie D seemed like he was obsessive about being the best. Being in the hunt wasn't good enough, but. His ego is tied into it. Jed's ego isn't, isn't tied into it. He's a financial analyst. Like, he's still planning for the future while doing business as usual. Same with Parag. The way I see it. You nailed it. They are not all in on Lance. Playoffs are not guaranteed playing the AFC West this season, which could be another reason why no free agents. Maybe. But they're not all in on Lance. Absolutely not. They're not all in on this season. I don't know what they're doing, but they're waiting until next season to make their big push because that's when the cap goes up. But that's when every team is going to make a big push I feel like the Niners aren't going to actually do anything differently next year. I don't know. We'll see. I want to keep. I want to keep going on. The Niners' biggest weakness. What's interesting is coming into the off season, they. I think most people would agree their two biggest weaknesses were cornerback and special teams, and they addressed both. They made. They signed a, an expensive starting corner, and added three special team specialists who are all very good. Like Odom, George Odom, excellent special teams player. Oren Burks, excellent special teams player. Ray Ray, Ray McLeod is an upgrade over Brandon Ayuk, who was quite a disappointment as a punt returner. I campaigned for him. He didn't come through. Better wide receiver than punt returner. McLeod's going to help there. But in the process of addressing those two weaknesses, a, a lot of Niner fans feel like, boom, well, this team has no more weaknesses. They just added, you know, filled the only holes. I disagree. I think there's a weakness now, a clear weakness on this team that wasn't there last season. Offensive line. The Niners have lost... Two starters on the offensive line, Lake and Tomlinson and Tom Compton. And they're not going to replace Lake and Tomlinson. That's going to be Aaron Banks, most likely. They'll probably they'll probably sign some reserve guard who is not a starter just to say that there's competition, but it's going to be Banks. Um, and then at right tackle, you lost Tom Compton, who's not a great starter, but the Niners won nine to 12 games with him in the starting lineup. He's going to be starting for Denver. And the replacement is supposed to be Mike McGlinchey. Well, we don't know when he's going to play. If he's going to play, he might not play this year. He's a very serious injury. So all of a sudden, if he doesn't play, who's the right tackle? Justin School? Justin School? Can Tavi, I mean, I'm no, sorry, Colton Kivitz? Jalen Moore? I mean, no one good enough. So to me, what the Niners have on their offensive line is the best left tackle in football and four question marks. Aaron Banks as a starter, question mark. Alex Mack, he's going to be 37 in November, question mark. Daniel Brunskill, I mean, he's not a question mark. He's 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 a known mediocrity. Sorry, Daniel. He's solid, but he's like, the lowest tier of starter you could have on an offense, on an offensive line. Daniel Brunskill at right guard and then right tackle, total question mark. How do you let two starters walk on the offensive line, left uh, left guard and right tackle, and say, well, the replacements are uh, a second-year player who didn't play as a rookie and a guy who tore the quadricep off his bone and may or may not play in 2022? That's the plan? Oh, or just a school who, who tore his ACL last year. 
That's the plan. And the Niners are real nonchalant about it. Like, it's cool, whatever. We got left. We got a great left tackle. This is why I was a little hesitant on spending all that money on, on Trent Williams. Yeah, he's great. But one left tackle doesn't make a great offensive line. I was kind of like into spread, spreading the money around. So you'd have like a good starting left guard and a good starting right tackle. And maybe a starting center who's younger than 37. But no, the Niners are like the only position that matters on the offensive line is left tackle. We can just fill in the rest with dollar store general um, purchases. And that's that's a scary strategy. Of all the positions you want to save, save money at, offensive line, especially when you're trying to make uh, a smooth transition, a smooth landing for Trey Lance, you want him to be his best, you want to look smart for trading the Deshaun Watkins. I mean, the Browns traded three first-round picks for Watson. The Niners traded three fir first-round picks for freaking Lance. Spent three firsts on Lance, while the Browns spent three firsts on Watson. Damn, that's expensive. And now you're going to take away two starters in the offensive line and be like, all right, go play, go uh, justify our investment in you. Go play like Deshaun Watson. Man, that's rough. Maybe if the Niners didn't have Jimmy Garoppolo in their books, they could afford Lake and Tomlinson. And I know people are like, well, you shouldn't spend that much on Lake and Tomlinson. Like, okay, well, what's the alternative? Just get way worse at left guard? Why is that the option? I'm all about replacing Lake and Tomlinson if there's actually like a, a, a an upgrade for cheaper, but you don't have that. You got Aaron Banks who you didn't trust to even back up. Like he was he was a healthy scratch on game days. The Niners' attitude was, God forbid someone gets hurt, we can't, have, we can't have Aaron Banks go in the game for a minute. Now he's a starter? Come on. This is bad. You could get Trey Lance hurt. You had him playing behind backups last year in the, in the preseason. He got hurt. Now you got backups on the offensive line. The Niners created a weakness this offseason. I'm sure they're going to address offensive line eventually. But when? And with what? Good players or just dollar dollar general store players? Grant, look at Luke Fortner and uh, Donovan West in the draft, both solid centers that can play at both guard spots. Okay, that sounds good. But they also need a tackle. Uh, what has to happen for Lynch to be on the hot seat? Niners missed the playoffs. Niners missed the playoffs. Although what I think could happen with him is – Eventually, he'll just take one of these announcer jobs, right? I don't think he's going to get fired. He's a Hall of Famer. I don't think the Niners want to do that to him. They, he can they can just be like, hey, man, I think it's probably in your interest to take one of those announcer jobs now. Because we want to give this team to Adam Peters. I mean, really, the way I look at it is they need to get John Lynch out of the building. He's doing he's hurting the team now. This whole Jimmy Garoppolo saga is his fault. It's his responsibility. They got to get him out. Get him out. Get Parag Marate out. And just turn over the personnel department of Adam Peters. That's what I think. John Lynch is doing more harm than good at this point, And Parag Marate is no longer necessary. I'm sorry. He's hurting the team too. We don't need a penny pincher. And an emotional former player running this team. Because they're hurting it. Give the team over to Adam Peters. He could do it. He doesn't need Parag. What? So that's, that's my answer to your question, Abel. Um, domain threat says, in all fairness, it appears that the positions where we've lost folks, O-line, wide receiver, and even potentially safety are deep positions in this draft. Okay, well, the Niners haven't shown an ability to draft good offensive linemen. If they draft a guy, is he going to be able to start and excel this year? They 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 did it with McGlinchey. He was the ninth pick in the draft, and he was never good. They haven't done it with anyone else. Wide receiver, that's another position that generally takes a little while for a guy to – to contribute, at least if it's a good team. Sometimes it takes wide receivers three years. So, I mean, yeah, they'll draft a wide receiver. It's a deep class. But if you want, like, contributors, you might need to sign them. I'm just saying. Can we just swap seconds and thirds with the Colts and maybe even a third or something next year? With, uh, for uh, Nah, I don't think so. I know the Niners want the 42nd pick. I don't think they're going to get the 42nd pick. They're holding out for that 42nd pick. They're not going to get it. What is the plan for the draft this year? All right, we'll talk about it right now. Um, the Niners have to sign an offensive tackle. They might disagree. But I think they know it's a big need. And the reason I say they have to sign an offensive tackle is if they don't, then they got to draft one. Because we don't know what's up with Mike McGlinchey. He tore the quadricep off his bone. 
not all players ever, not all players come back from that. Some players never play again from that. And even if he does play again, he could miss training camp, preseason, the first month, the first half of the season, the whole season. It could take a long time for him to come back, years. In, in which case, what is the plan at offensive tackle? It can't be start Justin School. It can't be start Colton McKivitz or Jalen Moore. Can't be that. It's not good enough. You can't do that to Trey Lance. You can't do it to Jimmy Garoppolo. It's not fair. It's going to mess up the whole offense, which is a very expensive, high-powered offense. Can't trust it to these backup, backup, backup offensive linemen. So if they don't sign an offensive tackle, they'll draft one a invariably with their second round pick number 61 but i'm looking it doesn't seem like there's any offensive tackles ranked in that area which means the niners will either have to find a way to trade up or reach for a, for a player who should probably go 80 or 90 because he's an offensive tackle they'll reach is that what you want to do you know like you're, you're holding out for this extra draft capital for jimmy garoppolo but the, the pick you have 61, you're just going to reach and, and treat it like it's pick 80 because you have a need? Can't do that. You got to fill all your holes in free agency so you can take best player available in, in the draft. It's a huge hole. Who are you going to sign that can that could potentially start 16 games for you at right tackle? That's why I'm surprised the Niners didn't re-sign Tom Compton. You might need him. And he showed that he can execute your run scheme and you can win with him. You were 9-3 and three with him in the starting lineup, including the, the playoff games. And you let him go? Okay, so get someone better than him, right? That's what you're going to do, right? You're going to sign someone better than him, right? No, you're not. They're going to sign someone you've never heard of and say, hey, well, we we believe in Colt McKibbitts. No, you don't. What you should do is sign someone like a vet, Cornelius Lucas, Brandon Shell, Bobby Massey, Riley Reef, someone with starting experience, a vet. Those guys could be even better than Mike McGlinchey. I just gave four names, Cornelius Lucas, Brandon Shell, Bobby Massey, Riley Reef. There's other guys too. Sign a starting caliber offensive tackle. Otherwise, this season could get real bad. They could miss the playoffs and then people would blame Trey Lance. I'll still go back to the Harbaugh years. To me, the reason they missed the playoffs the only time, the only, 2014 was the one year they didn't have a winning record. The one year they missed the playoffs. Why? Because... Anthony Davis, the right tackle, didn't play much that year. And the replacement, the replacement was Jonathan Martin. Ruined everything. One subpar offensive tackle ruins everything. All of a sudden, the Niners, not only could Jonathan Martin not pass protect, but he, you couldn't run block either. So the Niners couldn't run to his side. They had to run left all year. Is that going to be the Niners this year? That's how important right tackle is. So um, they better sign an offensive tackle. They better not let this season come down to how good Justin School is or Cole McKivitz. That would be negligence, gross negligence. You're trying to set up Trey Lance for success. For success, He's cheap. You should be splurging on offensive linemen. You should have two starting caliber offensive tackles. You probably should have re-signed Lakin Tomlinson or, or, or signed some guard. Not just, oh, we don't spend on guards. Why? Oh, because you're so good at drafting him, right? Like Josh Garnett. All right. Jimmy should have been gone a week ago, shaking my head. Yeah. Uh-huh. But the Niners are never going to spend spend money this year. It's it's all they're all saving it for, for Debo and Nick Bosa. That's a lot of look, man. I still say the Yorks are cheap. They got a lot of signing bonuses to, to shell out this year. Big one for Ward. Big one for Bosa. Big one for um Debo. That's gonna be like 75 million in, in checks. That's it. They're done. They'll 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 uh set, Hand out sign, more signing bonuses next year. Your assessment on player development is fair. This whole Jimmy situation was hijacked by Watson being available at Brady's un, unretirement, domain threat says. Well, the Niners probably should have read the room better. I don't know. Figure it out, Parag, or 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 just quit. I still don't see how Parag and John are helping this team at this point. Um, all doom and gloom after we made the NFC Championship game. You say you're not a fan, acting like one right now. We can move Brunskill to right tackle, Jalen Moore to right guard. You want to move Brunskill. He's a serviceable right guard. Now you want to try him in a new position. This is why the Niners have so much trouble in the offensive line. They always like, oh, this guy can play. We'll play him there then. That's a terrible idea. And it's not doom and gloom after the Niners made the NFC. It's, I'm just talking about urgency. 
This is how Eddie DeBartolo would be talking. It's not doom and gloom. It's win the Super Bowl. Don't miss an opportunity. Don't miss an opportunity. Do you do you look back at the hardware years and be like, man, that was so much fun. We, we almost won a Super Bowl. That was great. I loved almost winning a Super Bowl. It felt, it felt phenomenal. No. Like, it's painful, right? The hardball years, the, the memory of those years is actually painful. Why? Giant missed opportunity. Is this going to be like that too? They've missed two already. Two opportunities. Win a Super Bowl. Come on. Don't be content to be the sixth best team in the league. I know you are. I appreciate the five bucks though, but come on. Hold these financial analysts that run this freaking team accountable. Ken says, Mario Goodrich, cornerback, uh, Kirby Joseph, cornerback, Logan Bruss, offensive tackle, Jaquari Roberson, wide receiver, <laughs> Jerrion Ely, wide receiver, uh, running back, uh, James Mitchell, tight end, <laughs> Verona McKinley, safety, Luke Gadecki, offensive tackle, is my mock draft in order they can get him. Well, thank you, Ken. I appreciate you going on the record. Gary Dotson says, is Lynch dumb enough to have a quarterback competition between Trey and J Jimmy and training camp? I think he would definitely do it. The question is, is Kyle dumb enough? Kyle, don't let it happen because the team will pick Jimmy and you will continue to be a follower and not a leader. Lead. All right. In addition to an offensive tackle, the Niners have to sign a wide receiver. Then we have four on their roster. Ayuk Debo, Jawan Jennings, and Ray Ray McLeod, who's a gadget player. He might as well be a running back or, or a special teams guy. I don't know how much they're going to throw to Ray Ray McLeod. So they need multiple wide receivers. It's a... Excellent deep class in the draft. The Niners clearly need to take advantage. But even if they take a, a, a guy in round three and he's talented and, and can become a starter one day, he may not be a big contributor on a contender as a rookie. So in case he's not, happens all the time. And it's hard to tell which wide receivers are going to be good right away, which ones aren't. That's kind of a, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, the Niners could sign a guy. And I think it's pretty clear the kind of wide receiver they're looking for, deep threat, the kind of guy that would not fit with Jimmy Garoppolo, the kind of guy that would average 20 yards a catch, that would get like two targets, one catch, 70 yards, touchdown. That's his contribution to the game. And they've been rumored to be interested in Marquez Valdez Scantling. He'd be perfect. He's exactly the kind of guy who would complement the wide receivers they already have, and Trey Lance's skill set. There's no freaking way they're getting Marquez Valdez scaling. I would be so shocked. They're not going to go out and sp uh, spend money on another starter. I don't see it. Like, that's, a, that's a number two wide receiver in the league. If he goes back to Green Bay, he's their number one wide receiver. And Green Bay's interested in him. They just lost Devontae Adams. So you're really going to make a pitch to Valdez scaling? Like, hey, for, forget Green Bay. Come over here. You'll get more targets over here. Really? I don't see it. The Niners are going to go cheap at wide receiver. I don't think they're going to sign another starter this year. They need a starting offensive tackle, a starting left guard, a starting nickelback, a starting strong safety. I, don't, I think a starting wide receiver, too, considering the fact that Debo is now a running back. A starting caliber wide receiver, especially if you want to go three wide receiver sets with, your, with Trey Lance and the spread option. Why not? But no. No Marquez Valdez scaling. They're going to get some guy. Here's what they're going to do. Remember in 2017 when they signed um, Marquise Goodwin and made a big deal about it? They're like, oh, in Kyle's offense? Oh, what a steal. He's so fast. He just had, they just don't know how to use him. He's going to be great. They're going to get the next Marquise Goodwin. So who's that going to be? Uh, someone who's like 26, 27, had a rough go of it in the NFL, but been on bad teams, maybe had some injury issues, super fast. Someone that if you get, you know, doesn't have to start in the Niners, but give him 30 targets. Maybe he'll get four or five long plays, a couple touchdowns. Who is that? Probably like John Ross. John Ross is who the Niners are probably going to sign a wide receiver. You know, he gets hurt every year, ran a 4-2-2 famously at the, at the combine. I loved him coming out of Washington, but hurt all the time. But last year, had a good year on the Giants. He didn't catch a bunch of passes, but when he was targeted – his uh, the, the Giants quarterback rating was over 110. So Kyle can be like, look, I think there's something there. I liked him coming out. He was on bad teams in Cincinnati. Finally had a little bit of success last year. You bring him here and make him like a fifth option in our offense. With that speed, you'll have to honor it. Everyone's going to be so focused on Kittle, I, Debo, that I can get him wide open down the field. He'll be great. I'll turn him into something. 
which, you know, he probably won't. But uh, that's what I think they're going to do. They're going to sign someone like John Ross and say, he was a first round pick. What a huge signing. Super Bowl, John Ross and Ray Ray McLeod. I'm sorry. Marquez Valdez Scanling would be a phenomenal signing. But, you know, they're not going to they're not going to sign anyone like him. They're not going to sign Zadarius Smith. They got to save all their money for Debo and Nick Bose. They got to they got to count. They got to look at the future. You can't mortgage the future. Sure, they're a couple of plays away from the Super Bowl right now, but what about the future? The Niners, it's more important to be the sixth best team for a long time than to win a Super Bowl. Did you know that? According to the 49ers front office and ownership group, it seems that they feel being one of the best teams consistently is better than making that push and winning a Super Bowl. Maybe that's why they have never won a Super Bowl. Maybe that's why. Because they don't know what it takes. They're afraid of what it takes. They're comfortable doing business as usual in the present, no matter what the circumstances are, and planning ahead. Just keep planning ahead. Uh huh. Steve says, Grant, you're right. Rams sitting here spending up to the cap, and we're sitting here waiting till when to pay Bosa and Samuel? Painful. Yeah, and that's why I'm talking about it. Like, I feel like not fans should be under should be aware of what's happening, and they should be pissed. Come on, you should be putting pressure. It's like. How when you don't like something that's happened in your neighborhood, you call your congressperson and be like, yo, what's up with the crime? What happened? What's up with the schools? Yo, you should be putting pressure on Jed, Parag, John. Like, what is going on? We're fans and we're faithful, but we're not stupid. We can see exactly what you're doing and you're messing it up. And I bet you players in your locker room see it too. Make the push. You were in the NFC freaking championship game last year. You lost to a team that you'd beaten six times in a row before then. Make a move. I mean, have they even really improved special teams? Like, yeah, they brought in Ray McLeod, Oren Burks, George Odom. They lost Trent Shurfield and Trent Cannon. Trent Cannon was a hell of a special teams player. Forget his returning. He is a hell of a gunner. He had like seven tackles in, what, 11 games with the Niners last year? Really good. Gone. Shurfield, really good gunner. Gone. And Mostert doesn't really play special teams anymore, but could. So, yeah, I mean, they lost three, game three. I mean... Six, one, half dozen in the other. They might have gotten better on special teams. I don't know. But uh, they, and they got better at one cornerback spot, but they got worse in the offensive line, at safety, at nickel, at nose tackle. I don't know, man. I don't know. This feels like 2020. This feels like 2020. Niners are afraid that Jimmy will need to compete for a starting spot and most likely get beaten by a third string, which will lead to Grant being right. Jesse, man, if they have an actual competition, Jimmy's going to win because. The locker room is just sees everything through Jimmy colored glasses. Jimmy color is a, is a color. The main threat says those positions can be filled with free agent starters uh, with Jimmy money's off the books. Just cut him money more important than picks at this point. I still think they could get a third round pick. Probably that, that the Colts are just being like, they really think they're going to get our second round pick. No, but when they come to sent to their senses, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll trade a third. Otherwise we'll just trade a second for Baker. My bad, Kirby Joseph safety. Check out uh, Jerry and Ely on my mock draft. Sc <laughs> scat back, fasted out of the draft and got hands. Jakari Robertson, 6'3", deep threat. Hands. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe they're waiting for an adult wide receiver. Ha, 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 ha. Dante Pettis is a free agent. John should be fired. Adam Peters wouldn't do this with Jimmy Garoppolo. What are we doing about our O-line and safety? We can't draft O-line. Bose has fifth-year option. I don't know, man. I'm with you. Like enough of John Lynch. Goodbye. Why don't Why don't the Niners get rid of him and uh, Jimmy Garoppolo in the same move? Can they trade John Lynch in this trade? Enough of him, man. What does he do here? I don't get it. Enough of John Lynch. He's hurting the team now. I'm telling you, he is a competitor who is focused on winning the trade when he needs to be focused on winning the Super Bowl. And his obsession with this trade is hurting the Niners' chances of winning a Super Bowl. You got to get rid of him. Sorry, John. Eddie D was all about winning the Yorks, all about money. I know it's 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 a, it's depressing. And the people who like the Yorks the most always praise them. Like, oh, Parag, this is a team-friendly deal. Actually, it's not that expensive for Traverius Ward. Who cares? Win the Super Bowl. Go get J.C. Jackson. Don't tell me you got someone slightly worse than J.C. Jackson, but it's team-friendly. Don't, I don't want to hear about that. Eddie D got Dion. Who are you going to get? Which Hall of Famer are you going to get in free agency? Just saying. Because he got Dion. Parag is a fraud. He's not an elite cap manager. D Ford contract and Jimmy G contract. Prove that. Thank you. Yeah, where was Parag on those ones? Where was the team friendly deal on that? I mean, D Ford and Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, uh, 
acquired generational wealth here because Parag couldn't do what he's supposed to do is protect the organization. Generational wealth for D Ford and Jimmy Garoppolo because Parag is so overrated. Super duper overrated. Draft crush time. Daniel Falele, 6'9", 400 pounds, moves like Sewell, plays right tackle, tosses dudes like Trent Williams. Please look him up. Possible film review with Jack. Yeah, I, yes, I'll look him up. Daniel Falele, thank you. We're going to do some film review for sure. We did it last year. The Colts should have been traded for Jimmy Field like Ursay is holding it up because he doesn't want to feel like he's getting fleeced. Dude, why would the Colts trade? That would be dumb. Trading 42 for Jimmy Garoppolo would be stupid. They're not stupid. Trade a third-round pick for him? Whatever, fine, whatever. But not the 42. That's almost a first-round pick. Hell no. How about that? Hell no. All right. The players with the with the most approved this year, and then I'm done. Hold on. I got it written down. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got three. The players with the most approved in 2022. Javon Kinlaw. Aaron Banks. Talanoa Hufunga. Those three guys. It seems to me that the 49ers are just handing those three guys started jobs. That their attitude was at, at left guard, like we can't re-sign Lakin Tomlinson because he's so expensive, plus we spent a second-round pick on Aaron Banks last year because we wanted to replace Lakin Tomlinson. Now, Aaron Banks did nothing as a rookie, but we have to justify our investment of a second-round pick in Aaron Banks, so he's the starter. Not because he's the best option. Not because the Niners have learned something or feel confident about it. They feel they have to, to justify the investment. Um, same thing with Javon Kinlaw. DJ Jones leaves. He's really good, not expensive, but the Niners are like, we can't re-sign DJ Jones. We spent a first round pick on Javon Kinlaw. He needs to start. Otherwise, we look dumb. So now Kinlaw is being handed another starting job when he hasn't even shown that he has two functioning knees. Like He's a decent player when healthy but he's never healthy and last year he missed the whole freaking year all most of the, most of the year he was hurt the whole time probably should have never played gutted it out what if that happens again what's the guarantee that it won't and if it does what's the plan so kinlaw whole lot to prove they're like you got this buddy you'll be fine 17 games no problem okay well he needs to play the whole season aaron banks needs to be a starting caliber player that's a lot to prove and it's like the competition for Javon Kinlaw is what? Hassan Ridgeway? That's not competition. That's a backup. The competition for Banks is what? Nothing. I'm sure they'll, I bet they'll sign a guard eventually, but they're going to sign like the Hassan Ridgeway of guards at best. And then Talanoa Hufunga. This guy got benched last year for J for Jaquaski Tart. They were trying to make Tal Talanoa Hufunga, Hufunga a thing, got benched. And now I guess the Niners are upset that Tart was so bad in the NFC Championship game that they're moving on, but Hafunga's not an upgrade. And then they signed George Odom, who is a special teams player to back him up. I'm thinking the Niners should re-sign Tart. Like, wow. Anyway, but they probably won't. So you have three starters who haven't earned their position and are looking like clear downgrades from the vets they're replacing. They got a lot to prove. You know, show the Niners that they were right to have faith in you. Because this faith at this point, what could they possibly have seen from Aaron Banks between January and now? He was inactive during the season, but now he's a starter. Why? He hasn't even, he hasn't even competed for it. He, he's ready now. He wasn't ready last. Couldn't back up anyone. Couldn't go in a game two, weeks, two months ago. Now he's a starter. I don't know. So Banks. And then there's more. Who's the nickelback? Who's the nickelback? I mean, frankly, it should be Traverius Ward, right? When what oh, Traverius Ward should go wherever wherever he's needed. If you're if they're facing the 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 Rams, and Cooper Cup is killing the Niners, then Traverius Ward should be on Cooper Cup in the slot. That's what they're paying him for. Why put Mosley in there? Mosley isn't getting paid half of what Traverius Ward is getting paid. It should be Ward. It won't be Ward. He does what he does on the outside. So who's it going to be? Lenore. Whoever it is, that guy has a ton to prove because he's never done it before. Mosley, never done it before. Not, I mean, not full time. Not Lenore. Not Ward. Who's the, who's the, I'm curious. So yeah, the starting nose tackle, left guard, right tackle. What about Justin School? Right now, Justin School or Colton McKivitz is in line to start week one at right tackle. Unless 
Mike McGlinchey like defies physics, defies science, and makes it an unprecedented recovery from tearing a quad off his bone. All these young guys who weren't trusted last year are just saying, hey, you're the starter. You know why? Because the Niners aren't going all in this year. It's a youth movement. They're going to go all in next year. This is the year before the year that they go all in. Isn't that exciting, Niner fans? Got something to look forward to. I actually like picking up MVS to play outside and allowing them to play Debo more in the slot and still be able to be multiple in motion him to running back. Oh, yeah. Be great to get MVS, but they won't. It would be great to get him. Are you kidding? They won't, though. Too expensive. Sorry. Hey, Grant, how was your Sunday evening going? I'm having a great time. What's up? SG Sports Talk. Is that Chardall? What's up, Chardall? How you doing, man? Most approved Kittle. Are you going to play consistent? Oh, yeah, man. How about George Kittle? Paying you a lot of money, dude. And Eric Armstead. George Kittle and Eric Eric Armstead doesn't get hurt anymore, but he only produces like four or five games a year, or if that. Kittle, can you stay healthy, please? Can you reach 1,000 yards? Because Debo's a running back now. The top two options in the passing game are you and Ayuk. Not Debo. Debo's the third option in the passing game. He's the running back. That's how it shook out. That's how it shook out the last, from week 10 on. You led the team in catches from week 10 on, George. Ayuk led the team in yards, receiving yards, but you led the team in catches from week 10 on. You got to stay healthy, man. You got to give the Niners another 1,000-yard season. Because you see what happens to receivers whose game is built on speed. Once they hit 30, it's over. His This guy is a receiver whose game is built on speed. Can we get one more elite season out of you? Because it's been two years since you've been elite. The last two years have been up and down. Can we get a, a another George Kittle 2018, 2019 vintage year? Or are those gone? I'm thinking they're over. But a lot of people disagree with me on that. So prove me wrong, George. Uh, Greenlaw and Jimmy get it done for the Colts second. They're not getting the Colts second. You're not getting the Colts second. You're not getting the Colts second. It's not happening. John, Parag, Jed, Carson, everyone in the world, forget the second round pick from Indianapolis. Take whatever you can get. Move on. Sorry, Carson, but I appreciate it. Carson left that comment if you're listening on a podcast in the future. The main threat says safety, Honey Badger, and everybody not named Trent Williams on O-line are my biggest concerns. Uh, uh, Teron Armstead would be a great pickup too. Yeah, uh, yeah, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I love Honey Badger, but these are these are big-time starters who get like eight, nine, ten million a year that the Niners aren't going to – they're not going to be giving out any more contracts like that. Prove me wrong, John. Prove me freaking wrong. What's with all these fake Twitter accounts posting straight cap about Niners moves? Don't even know who to trust anymore to follow. I don't know. But I, I just noticed that every offseason, like, the easiest way to get followers on Twitter is to praise everything the Niners do. I, once someone, like, gets a few thousand followers and they're trying to get up to, you know, trying to, it's just praise, 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 praise. The only time you really are critical of the team is when it's convenient, when they've done something obviously wrong. And that's never the offseason. You can't ever prove a team wrong until they start losing games. So it's just time for all the fans that want to be analysts to say, oh, the Niners are so smart. And it's it's totally disingenuous. It's just so that their follower count will go up quicker. It's so that their tweets will get more likes. Some people say I'm shameless and I, you know, troll for attention. But I'm telling you, it takes a lot of skill to build a, a, a following covering a team while being critical of it. Who else does that? Any idiot could build a following covering a team saying everything they do is good. Any idiot could do that. They signed a guy. Here's why it's good. They signed a guy. Here's why I like it. That takes no thought. And that's what most people do because Niner fans want to hear it. I do not tell Niner fans what they want to hear. That's why I had 5,000 followers on, on Twitter uh, in 2019 and 10,000 in 2020. Even though I covered the team for 10 years, I was not popular. But after 10 years of covering the team, people are like, damn, Grant actually is right a lot. And these other guys are telling me what, what I want to hear. That's why I got the following. Because I, I stuck to my guns for a decade. I didn't waffle back and forth in the offseason. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. I don't know why I'm just talking about myself like that. Sorry. Went on a rant. Went on a rant. I'm just saying. <laughs> Come on, aspiring journalists. Don't just sell out for the for the for the follows just saying but yeah yeah not everyone can do what i do i understand do what you got to do do you do you because i know anytime someone tries to do what i do they get fans oh you try to be the next grant cone oh because he thinks for himself 
thinking for yourself as being the next Grant Cohn. Oh, what a man. That's that's awful. I don't know. Maybe thinking for yourself is a good thing. I'm tripping. I waffle all the time. Whatever, Andrew. <laughs> Innovative Energy says 2021 Niners came up short with 10 on offense in 2020. To, uh, came up short with 10 on offense. Garoppolo says Innovative Energy. Uh, 2022 49ers. How can we make it even more difficult to come up short? Hard to root for a joke front office. To me, it's just like I was talking to Jason Aponte. He's a big Yankee fan. I don't follow baseball as, like I did in the 90s and 2000s, but apparently the Yankees have gone from George Steinbrenner, an Eddie DeBartolo figure who would just spare no expense to his kids, and they are financial analysts trying to save a buck and plan for the future, kind of like Jed. And it's like the Niners are like the Yankees now. Worldwide brand, very famous for the for the, the, the championships in the past, and still like have that aura around them, but people don't really understand that it's a different organization now. It's not this, and and this, uh, all this cachet that the Yankees and the 49ers have is based on the past. And I'm over here trying to be like, we should uphold the values of the past, the standards of the past. That's where I'm coming from. A lot of people are like, those days are over. Jed's not Eddie. We got to learn to embrace Eddie. I don't have to learn to embrace a damn thing. I don't root for this team. I'm quality control. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll be back tomorrow. Got Vish most likely. I haven't talked to Vish, but I think we we did one on, on fire. I'm gonna see how I'm gonna see where Vish is at. Might do a cone phone. Also, got a new guest. Got a new guest. Rob Stats Guerrera. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Used to work for Pro Football Talk. Does a great blog. I mean, excuse me, podcast with Niners Nation. And he had me on his channel last week. I put the clips on my channel. You probably watched it. We had a lot of fun. I'm gonna have him on my channel tomorrow evening. That's going to be fun. That guy is a guy who thinks for himself. Um, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night. Peace.